Hi everyone, I'm Bill and welcome to Rankin Bass Vlogs number 14. Today I will be discussing Rudolph and Frosty's Christmas in July. So our story begins long before Santa and them were in the North Pole. There's a evil wizard named Winterbow who is trying to make winter last forever and take over the world, of course. But then but then a spirit called the Aurora Borealis decides to stop Winterbolt and put him to sleep for thousands of years. And when he wakes up, he sees that Santa and the elves have taken over the, the North Pole and and they're taking over the North Pole, and he's delivering Christmas presents every year. And then Winterbolt decide, decides one year to send a snowstorm one Christmas to stop him. And yeah, you know, it's the one that Rudolph saves everything. Okay, and on top of that, confused yet? Oh, we're just getting started. On top of that, we get a another origin story of Rudolph. You all know what happened with Rudolph, but apparently he got his shiny nose from the Aurora Borealis and said that it will only shine if he uses his nose for good. And years later, we see Rudolph is now BFFs with Frosty. And while visiting, he sees... He, Rudolph meets up with his friend Milton, who is an ice cream man in the North Pole. Trust me, we're almost there. I know this is a big... This plot's a little everywhere, but just stay with me. Please, just stay with me. So, and he gets suggested under Winterbolt's powers, because Winterbolt casts a spell on him long from a distance, to invite Rudolph and Frosty to go to the circus that his girlfriend's mom runs. Her name is Lorraine. She's sort of like a cowboy type. Um, and... Now, why is Winterbolt doing this? Because apparently the the Red Nose is protected by the Northern Lights, which is in the North Pole. So, if he moves to outside the North Pole, it won't be protected anymore. And... Rudolph gets tricked into stealing money because of this other reindeer that Winterbolt got named, named Scratch, I think his name is, who is like the anti-Rudolph, this reindeer is an asshole, um, and is also working for this rival circus performer, and Rudolph has to take the blame for stealing the money, or Frosty would melt because of these amulets that Winterbolt gave them. That if that if you know what, I'm not even gonna continue to explain further. It's the plot itself has given me a freaking headache. So okay, um, as you can tell, this plot is extremely convoluted and it's just really really confusing um yeah you know what would make sense for a rudolph and frosty crossover because you know rudolph and frosty are two of rankin bass's most popular properties so of course it would make sense to give them a crossover um, it looks like before the MCU, there was the 
Are we see you? Huh? Yeah, I know that joke sucked. Uh, the acting, Billy Mae Richards is back as Rudolph, Jackie Vernon's back as Frosty, and, eh, you know, they're typical Rudolph and Frosty. Paul Freeze plays Winterbolt, and he puts in a really good performance, and Winterbolt is, he's, I would say he's interesting look-wise, but it's just the typical take-over-the-world plot, and he just has so many freaking plans. You're, like, trying to keep up. Like, okay, which plan are we on now? We're on plan, like, 72? Oh, okay, let's keep going. Um, yeah. Um, he has this genie who is voiced by Thurl Ravenscroft, a.k.a. Tony the Tiger and the singer of the song You're a Mean One, Mr. Grinch. Um... And that's pretty intimidating and cool. Um, Mickey Rooney is back as Santa. Ethel Merman plays the circus owner, and she's funny, but no disrespect to the late Ethel Merman, but during a lot of the songs, her voice does get on my nerve. does sort of get on my nerves. No disrespect to this showbiz legend, but... Yeah, it's just too many things are going on. And, like, did we really need to know, like, how Rudolph's nose started to glow? Like, it's interesting. Like, it's good they show you the actual... It's, it's a good thing they show you the act, how it actually happened, which I'm sure... Which I guess is pretty cool. But did we really need to know about it? Because the song Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer is like the boy who cried wolf. You don't really no need to know the boy's backstory or how he came to the town. You just need to know. Boy cries wolf first time. Nobody believes him. Boy cries wolf second time. Actually, not boy cries wolf first time. No wolf. Cries wolf second time. No wolf. When there's an actual wolf, nobody believes him, and yeah. Um, yeah, I just think we didn't need to know how Rudolph's nose shine. Um, the music, most of the songs are not all that memorable. There's a sweet song that Rudolph, not Rudolph, that Frosty sings to Crystal and Santa sings to Mrs. Claus, but it's not really there. Ethel Merman has a few good songs, but like I said, her voice get, kind of gets on my, gets on my, gets under my skin. And the four songs that everybody knows is, of course, the Rudolph and Frosty songs, respectively, and Rockin' Around the Christmas Tree. And also the Rudolph and Frosty sing of We're a Couple of Misfits song. You know, the We're a Couple of Misfits, We're a Couple of Misfits. From the first one, somewhere Hermie, Hermie the Elf is sitting there thinking, Rudolph, that's our song. But, yeah, overall, I didn't hate this special. Like, some cool, it has some cool things in it, but... It's just very confusing. It's just very convoluted. And, yeah, it's just not that good. But I will give this credit. This was sort of the send-off to Rudolph and Frosty. Because this was the last special that had, the last Rankin Bass special that had Rudolph and Frosty. And also, this was the last one to include the original actors. This was the last time Jackie Vernon voiced Frosty. He passed away in 1988, and this was the last time Billy Mae Richards voiced Rudolph. She passed away in 2010. Like, yeah, there were specials after that, like Rudolph and the Island of Misfit Toys, and there was, what's it called, Frosty Returns, but after Rankin Bass shut down, 
Yeah, after Rankin Bass shut down, um, what happened? Oh yeah, here's what happened. There was um there those specials companies those specials broadcast rights are now owned by other companies. So the sequels were not made by Rankin Bass. So overall, I will give Rudolph and Frosty's Christmas in July a D. Alright guys, hope you enjoyed this review. Have you seen Rudolph and Frosty's Christmas in July? Let me know. And if there's a Rankin Bass special you want me to review, I mean a Christmas special that does not have to be Rankin Bass you want me to review, please let me know. Alright guys, thank you very much. Peace out.